Hey guys, so it's about time I did my old Fedora 23 review. Uh, so, basically, this is a slightly different format to the other ones in the sense that I am going to be discussing my experience with Fedora 23 through notes on the audio, but the video is going to be recorded separately using GNOME's uh, sort of built-in screen recording software, so we'll see how that um, ends up. And um, I'm just going to be playing around with a few of the apps that came with the uh, Fedora 23 installation. So I've been using this as my primary driver for the most part um, since it's came out. So it feels about a, a week, I think. And um, I really actually quite like it. I've liked Fedora for a while now. They're very, very good at what they do. Um, they are, of course, or considered by many rather, to be the beta testing wing of Red Hat um, and to do to and to a degree CentOS. Um, and it's a it's a really good working system. I've got a lot of um, high regard for Red Hat as a company. I've got a very high regard for the Red Hat developers. They are incredibly good at what they do, and they have contributed huge amounts to the overall Linux and open source community. So. Let's get on with the review. So off the bat, with the installation process, really liked it. Really easy, just glided through. It looked very, very polished. It looked very, very clean. It looked like a professional operating system, and that's exactly what it needed to look like. Now, Fedora, again, have always been really good on the installer. I remember my very first installation of Fedora, which was like Fedora Core 6 or Fedora 7, uh, and that was, you know, Fedora was what got me through the first year of university, and I really did not get pretty much any bugs with it, actually, in hindsight. Um, it was a very, very, very stable operating system, and um, that has pretty much always been my experience. Now, um, there was actually one bug after when I booted up, and that's that the GNOME Display Manager, so the, the login screen at the beginning, had a very, very low FPS. It kind of almost felt like there was like a memory leak, but there wasn't actually a memory leak. It just carried the same kind of symptoms. And this little problem with uh, GDM I do remember having when I tried out Fedora 22 as well. Um, I got around it by enabling auto login, so I never really looked for a solution. It could very well be that there's a very easy Googleable solution, but um, since I'm the only user of the test machine, then I just sort of set auto login and never really thought more about it. Uh, so booting up into the desktop looks great, looks absolutely amazing, and I've got to admit, it was Fedora 20 22 that got me onto the new sort of layout of the GNOME dashboard, the GNOME desktop, and all that kind of stuff. And actually, I mean, GNOME 3 is is really growing on me. It does a lot of things that I really, really like, and I didn't know that it would help me in the ways that it did. It was kind of like that desktop environment I never knew I needed. It's very, very resource intensive, and I really do not like how GTK 3 apps look on like GTK 2 desktops, so basically how GTK 3 apps work on, on XFCE. That really annoys me. There are themes you can get which sort of muddle through it, um, and I don't really like the design of the, the GNOME apps either, where they've got like their main buttons at the top. Still haven't worked out whether or not this is just me still getting used to the GNOME desktop, it's been a couple of years now. I only dip in and out of it, but I really would have thought that the the apps and, and the way that the buttons are laid out different to KDE, different to GNOME 2, different to XFCE, different to Mate, different to Cinnamon. Um, just ha having the the sort of the the OK or the apply button sort of in in the title bar, and I liked having a title bar. It gave you something easy to grab a grab a hold of and move windows around. Fedora, uh, I mean GNOME rather, is definitely a desktop environment that is a mouse and keyboard desktop environment. You can use just a mouse or just a keyboard for the most part, but it really does work best when you are using both. Uh, this is most notably when it comes to just opening up applications, when you can just hit the super key, type in the first couple of letters of the application you want, or even the description. Like if you type in uh, browser, you will get your Firefox and, 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 and your other browsers installed will show up as well, which is pretty good. Um, the GNOME App Store, now the is it the App Store? It's the GNOME Software Center. That's it. Uh, really good. Again, really polished. I would feel completely happy to just let a, a new beta Linux just run Riot on the uh, on the GNOME. Um, I'm going to keep calling it the App Store, aren't I? It's the Software Manager. The it was very user friendly. It's very intuitive. I like the fact that they curated the software on it as well. This is a this is a big thing to me. Is that a lot of Linux distributions 
sort of kind of in a way want to puff out their chest and show off how many apps they've got in their repositories. We've got more apps than anyone else. So like I know that Debian and Ubuntu often do this and of course with the Arch user repository any distribution that uses the Arch user repository or makes use of it rather often um, sort of brags about how many software packages are available as well but of course why shouldn't they? The flip side is too much can be too much sometimes especially for newcomers to Linux. Someone like me the more apps at my disposal, the happier I am. It gives me more choice. But sometimes with people that just really aren't that into their machines, you just want to, you know, open up your office program and go. Open up your, your internet browser and go. Um, and it's a very good app store for that. It's a, and, and people that are a bit more experienced can hit the command line. So I was playing around with something called DNF, which I think stands for Dandified something or other. Really good. Really love the command line. Uh, I basically resorted to the command line instead of using the uh, software center simply because it was just that intuitive. If you are familiar with like apt from the Debian based um, package management systems, you'll you'll get on completely fine with DNF. It works pretty much the exact same way. Uh, it's fast. It's yeah, it's easy. It's straightforward. It worked the same way that apt-get does, so I was completely um, in my comfort zone with that. And, you know, I'm not the best on the command line, so feeling comfortable on the command line was, was something that I really did appreciate. Okay, so there was one thing as well that I found particularly odd, and I read through a few blog posts that sort of clarified this. Chromium is not available either in the App Store or in the repositories at all, and this was particularly curious for me, especially considering it wasn't too much of a problem just to go to google.com forward slash chrome, download the... the uh, the proprietary version of the Chromium browser and then just sort of moved on with that. Um, the reason why Chromium isn't available in the Fedora repositories is because apparently the source code for Chromium is actually really quite difficult to compile and it was considered, I think it's considered an act of protest by the maintainers, the package maintainer, um, to not include it in the main Fedora repository until they can get their act together and make the Chromium builds a little bit more straightforward and easier, as I understand it. I could very well be wrong on that, or I could completely have misunderstood the situation, but it's um, it's a conscious decision. It's not like it's, it's, it's not an oversight. It is able, you are able to install Chromium into Fedora. You have to, I think you have to bring in an extra repository or something, but it is easier just to go to google.com forward slash Chrome. If you don't really mind the difference between using Chrome or Chromium, or, you know, if you're just happy sticking with Firefox, um, then you should you should really be okay. Uh, there was an interesting bug as well, which kind of happened. I think it's a bug. During the update process, my uh, my app store disappeared. The software center disappeared. The gnome app, uh, the gnome software center that came with the distribution actually just I feel it was uninstalled. It's uh, it was really quite unusual actually, and kind of um, in a in a weird way I guess ironic. Uh, but um, since I was so comfortable with the command line installing things, it didn't bother me too much. But it is a bit of a strange bug that I hope is fixed. I would imagine it is because it's generally not advised to get a distribution on release date, and I did that. So it could very well it could very well have been like a day zero error that was subsequently fixed or it could very well have been something stupid that I did um, but I did notice that one day I just sort of went to look for it and it was not there so uh, oh, one thing I do like and I'm not going to be showing it on the video side of things is the evolution uh, sort of the mail calendar uh, address book client that they've got there basically what you can do is you can go into GNOME and you can go into user accounts and you can log in using your Google account, your Facebook account. I think there's a Microsoft option there of all things. I think there are a few different account options that you can log into and they'll import various things into the desktop environment. And if this was going to be like my main distribution, I would be really, really quite in my element there because how uh, Google stuff integrates into the evolution client is perfect. It's, a br it's brilliant. You get the notifications from the calendar, the address book works, the email works out of the box. You log in once, it's all set up for you. It's brilliant. I love it. Um, and I don't know whether or not that's really more of a GNOME thing or a Fedora thing, so do consider this to be like a, a Fedora 23 slash GNOME review. But, um, but it was really sweet. The reason I'm not showing you is because obviously I've got emails and contacts and stuff which I can't obviously put on the internet. But trust me, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's very professional, very well done. And I think professional is what I, I really would sort of put at the top of this as a, as, a, as a single word description. 
Fedora do the uh, they do the enterprise side of things, or Red Hat and the Red Hat sort of ecosystem. They do the enterprise really, really well. But I do kind of feel that it might not necessarily be correct for the domestic market, which is fine because there are plenty of um, operating systems that are available for the for the desktop market. And the reason I say that is because it seems that every everything Fedora does does seem to just inch its way towards the the enterprise, uh, and it does have many 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 enterprise um, deployments. And I've heard a lot of people speak very 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 highly of it. Um, for what it's worth, I managed to install uh, the RPM Fusion and Fedi repositories reasonably easily, and that got me my um, my my codecs for playing videos, audio, um, flash, that kind of stuff, and uh, that was really without fault. And I think I pretty much installed them either on day one or day two or something. So that was um, you know kudos to them for that, and there were no real problems with that. Um, Fedi also has options to do things like install Microsoft fonts, uh, to install uh, Skype if that's your jam, uh, and a lot of other things for proprietary elements. So that was pretty good. So I've often considered Fedora to be really good at the enterprise side of things, but that being said, I do not feel that it might. I do not feel like it's a home distribution. And the reason I say that was because, and now I'm going to come to the part. Uh, where I was really at odds with Fedora. This is this is this is the reason why um, I will not be adopting it as my main distribution. Uh, is because it was very very difficult. In fact, I still haven't. But it it is very very difficult to install Nvidia drivers. I've got a GTX 970, which is a pretty high performance card, or at least it was when I bought it. And I really want to get the most out of it. And as a result, with Fedora, I'm either stuck with the open source Nouveau drivers or I have to go third party to get the NVIDIA drivers. Now I googled how to do it and it came up with like 10 different methods. And I tried a couple of them and I failed and broke the kernel every single time. So um, I ended up giving up and, and sticking with the open source drivers, which are okay. I mean, they've come a long way in recent months, but it's still not anything that you would consider um, acceptable from a high performance card which is a real shame but if you had uh, like an ATI or an Intel uh, chipset you know you'd be fine on that front as well or even if you had like a, a Nvidia card where the open source drivers were a little bit better but this is uh, this is a pretty new card and obviously it's not gonna do so well in that department so yeah I tried a couple of times to install Nvidia drivers from various you know third-party guides and so forth and it um, it broke my install every single time I tried it it could very it's most likely me that's doing something wrong but one of the things that i really consider quite important of a distribution is the ease of use and the the ease of use just wasn't there so it kind of feels that fedora just aren't making that outreach to support nvidia which is fine fedora are very very good at what they choose to focus on they are not that jack of all trades distribution they are an enterprise distribution you can use it at home but if you're using it at home it's not really that great for for NVIDIA graphics, which by extension means that it kind of means that you can't really run Steam on it. And I didn't see actually much of a Steam community around Fedora based distributions, which might just be, you know, part of the, the, the fact that Fedora does excel and Red Hat, the whole Red Hat ecosystem excels in the enterprise, but not maybe not so much in in the home market. When you've got distributions like Manjaro and Turgos and, you know, Linux Mint, Ubuntu and that whole family, You've got a lot of choice if you want to have you know NVIDIA driver support and Steam um, Steam games up and running. And I feel that if you are a gamer or someone that requires uh, like high high fidelity graphics, uh, this might not necessarily be the best distribution for that. But um, for everything else, it's it's pretty damn fine. Um, and it's not like Fedora's even trying to be like that home multimedia gaming distribution. It's trying to be an enterprise distribution and it's succeeding in leaps and bounds. Uh, for the most part, it was really quite stable. It was really quite user friendly. And apart from a few minor hiccups, I think that if you are inclined to adopt a, a sort of an enterprise level desktop environment, that focuses very heavily on the free software principles, you can't do any better than Fedora, especially if you want bleeding edge software. If you want something a bit more old, sort of, well, I was gonna say older there, but you know, a little more tested and stable, then CentOS is its sort of LTS equivalent. 
So, that's about the review, I think. Um, I am going to be looking forward to seeing how the uh, the video recording software included with GNOME, uh, you know, how that performs. And uh, I apologize for not using the hard G on the GNOME, but whenever I say GNOME, people always say, oh, he's saying GNOME weird. And whenever I say GNOME, pe you know, people always say, oh, but he's, he's not using the hard G. So I, I never really know how to, how to pronounce GNOME, GNOME. Um, okay, so as I've said like a million times already, Fedora focuses on the enterprise. It pretty much always has done, and I expect it always will do. And for the enterprise market that requires you know, free market principles and bleeding edge software, you can do no better than Fedora 23. It's really, really, really quite good, but it is enterprise. And this is the only enterprise in its distribution that I have reviewed on this channel. I've reviewed earlier versions of Fedora, but I don't think I've reviewed anything like OpenSUSE. And it is because OpenSUSE is an enterprise distribution in a similar vein to, to Fedora, I will not be reviewing the new version of OpenSUSE, or at least I'll not be using it as my main driver. I might give like a bit of a preview demonstration at some point, but uh, ultimately I am not gonna be focusing on enterprise distributions too much on this channel, simply because they're not my daily driver and they're not gonna be what I interact with a lot. That being said, when obviously relevant news and stuff comes up, I'll talk about it on this channel, but I'm um, spending a couple of weeks on a distribution that does kind of limit me based on things like games and multimedia and, you know, I need a lot of third-party apps for recording soft, you know, recording software and all that kind of stuff. And Fedora is not really the distribution designed for that. That's not really a fault of Fedora, that's just life. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you're so inclined, feel free to give Fedora 23 a try. It's got a hell of a lot going for it. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.